Hey there, it's Jitterybug. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be pretty different from our typical Let's Play style content, but I wanted to share with you guys the tools that I wish I knew existed when I first started making Minecraft content. So whether or not you are starting your own channel, have your own channel, or just want an inside scoop on how I create my videos, I hope you learn something and enjoy the video. A quick disclaimer before we begin, the programs I use and the way I use them are very much so not the only way to do things in content creation. This is just the way that I have found works best for me, but I have friends who have other ways that work best for them. I am also not sponsored by any of the programs you're going to see, and this is gonna be a very surface level. I am just trying to show you what tools exist and then you can dive deeper on your own learning how to use them. I'll give brief tutorials, but then I will also link some videos in the description so that you are able to learn how to use them in order to create videos for yourself. So without further ado, let's jump in to the first tool that I would like to show you guys. And that would be ModRinth. ModRinth is a way that you can organize all of your Minecraft instances in one place so you're not dragging mods in and out of mod folders when you're switching between worlds. So if you go to modrinth.com app, you'll be brought to this page where you can download the app and you'll get something that looks like this. Now, once you sign into your account, you will be able to download mod packs and create your own instances within ModRinth. So as a test, let's create one. We'll call it new series. You can choose your loader. I typically will use Fabric, but if you're using Forge mods, you can use Forge. Uh, we can just pick a random game version for now and click Create. Now going into here, adding content is as easy as clicking Add Content and then pressing the Install button and it recognizes what version we will need. We can add in shaders if we would like and resource packs and data packs. And if we go into the instance menu here, we can see what is installed and if they are needing to be updated. If they do need to be updated, it will look something like this with the arrows in a circle. You are able to separate instances within the Minecraft launcher itself. However, I prefer the user interface of ModRinth. CurseForge is another program that does this. However, I like ModRinth better and CurseForge also, I've had some issues with it updating and uninstalling itself and also it had some issues with some virus stuff a while ago, so I just prefer to use ModRinth for now. The next program I want to show you guys is OBS. When I first started, I did a lot of research as to what would be best to record my game with, and OBS kind of beats all of them out, and most people I know use OBS. It is free, you are able to record your game, you can record your display, you can separate different audio sources and then change the levels here. You can also add filters to your microphone so you can tweak everything so it sounds just right. OBS can also connect to your YouTube account so you can stream through OBS. And it is, in my opinion, pretty much the only way to go when it comes to recording your screen. I know a few people who use a different program, but I would highly recommend getting used to OBS. And I will link a video on using OBS and getting it all set up for you guys in the description. The next program I would like to show you guys is DaVinci Resolve. This is another free program and this is for editing your videos. So we need to have Minecraft, record Minecraft and edit Minecraft. Once you record your video through OBS, probably you can drag all of your footage and music into DaVinci and then cut it as you please. I'm not going to go into depth here because it is a very complicated program. There is so much you can do and so many tutorials out there on DaVinci. I did start with CapCut, but ultimately decided that DaVinci had a lot more flexibility and was more well-rounded. And most of the people I knew were using DaVinci. Some people like to use Adobe, but I think that is paid. But if that's what you're used to, that can work for you well as well. I will put a link in a description for a basic DaVinci tutorial just so you guys can learn how to use it. And just a quick tip, I would recommend watching a lot of different Minecraft YouTubers in order to learn how they edit their videos and pay really close attention to their pacing and 
what kind of music they're using and what clips they're using. Because the more you can learn from others, the more you can create your own personal style and see what works well in editing a video and keeping somebody's attention. So watch lots of videos and then dive in to editing your own. And it'll take a lot of trial and error before you get there, but I know you guys can do it. You'll probably want to use some music in your videos. If you go to YouTube Studio, there is a beta creator music program where you are able to view free tracks. You can also look at paid ones if you are wanting to buy licenses for some music. But in here, you can just choose whatever songs you want. So through here, you can choose what song you want and download it and add it to your video. Make sure you are giving credit in your description correctly, just so you don't run into any licensing issues down the road. Another spot you can find good music to use for your videos or streaming is the Minecraft Creator Safe playlist. This has music from all of the Minecraft updates, as well as the Dungeons, Legends, Minecraft Education, Minecraft Earth. So you can use any of these in your videos and it says the top, it's a collection of tracks that you're welcome to use in the Minecraft content that you create. So you can go to the Minecraft music on help.minecraft.net if you want some more information but using actual Minecraft music is a great way to not have to pay money for music in your videos. Now, what I use for my videos is a paid subscription to Epidemic Sound. This is kind of like a Netflix for music. I actually canceled my Netflix subscription to get Epidemic Sound for YouTube, but I love Epidemic Sound just because you can sort based on all sorts of genres and mood, or you can search for lyrics. There is also a similar tracks feature. So if you like this song and you want a bunch that sound the same, you can use that. And they also create a lot of different spotlight playlists and feature new music all the time. I also really like knowing that the artists that I'm getting music from are getting paid and I am supporting their creativity and they are supporting mine. It's a good way to support smaller music artists and also get a massive catalog of music for my own videos. The tool that I use to create my thumbnails is free. I use the free version of Canva, where you can just drag in your image. You can add a text box to add your episode number or your title, and you can add in um, images. So I can add in my little Minecraft character if I want to here. You can also edit those and add shadows or outlines. So it's a pretty basic tool and very easy to learn how to use. There's a variety of free elements that you can also incorporate into your thumbnails. And the free version has been good enough for me so far. A lot of people like to use Adobe Photoshop or PicMonkey or whatever other programs they are used to using. But I have found that Canva is just the easiest one for me to use. So if you don't have any experience with creating a thumbnail or photo editing, I'd recommend giving Canva a go. The next tool that I want to show you is the replay mod. So I hopped into the game and I have it downloaded. Now, when you download it and you enter your world, it will already be recording. So you can either stop or pause. You can also change your settings. I'm going to bind my replay mod settings button. So in here, you can have automatic recording on or off. There's a recording indicator in the corner that can show. But right now, Replay Mod is going, and let me show you guys how to use it. So say we wanted to create a time lapse of us building a little house. So we would build our house. So let's pretend that's our house. Then we get to go to the main menu. So click Done when that little box pops up. You can go into Replay Viewer, and the top one is going to be your most recent. And I'm in Replay Mod now, watching everything that I just did. So this is our timeline. So if we skip to the end and we find about where we build that house, we can use replay mod to do a quick time lapse. So we add a position and a time keyframe that tells us that we want the camera to go there at this time on the timeline. And then we can say we want the camera to end here. And if we hit play on our character, we can speed this up a little bit. And we can pause and that's going to be our time lapse. And let's say we want our time lapse instead of 15 seconds long, we only want it to be six seconds long. We can drag that little yellow bar to the left 
and then add our position and our time keyframe. In order to preview it, we drag that yellow bar all the way to the left and we hit play camera path. And this is gonna give us a video of what, if we export this, what it would look like. So replay mod is really great for creating a time-lapse or some cinematic shots. You then would render it and then click render and it would export that video to whatever folder you choose when you go to output file and you can name it here as well. You can also get rid of the name tag if you want. And there's a bunch of other settings that I don't really mess with at all. Now I have a handful of thumbnail tools for you. One of them is Blockbench. So if you go to blockbench.net, click open web app. And then if you go to file and then plugins, and then you go to available and you type in Minecraft title generator, it'll pop up here and there will be a little install button. I have it installed right now. So once you install that, close the plugin tab and then click on Minecraft title, create new Minecraft title. Now say I want to have a title that says jittery bugs world. I can choose what I want on the top text first. I can choose my texture. We can go with this one and then click finish. So there it says jittery bugs. And then if I go to this button down here and I change that to say world, and then I wanna change the text type to bottom. And say I want to change the texture as well and click finish. If I click render here, if I click this button and I click save render, it'll download it for me. So you can use all the different textures. So this is how I made this cottage core modded survival logo right here. So I use like a flower grass texture and then the gray modded survival on the bottom. And it makes your videos just look a little bit more professional. The next tool I have for you is thumbsup.tv. If we put a thumbnail into here, then we can see what it's going to look like on YouTube, which is nice. So you can see if the words you have are able to be read by the viewer and if this little timestamp down here is blocking anything so i like to put my episode numbers in the lower left corner because in the lower right hand corner it'll often get blocked by the little timestamp so thumbs up.tv is a great little tool just to preview how your video is going to look in all sorts of youtube situations the next tip i want to share is opening your thumbnail up in paint and outlining things you want to emphasize. I like to use the line tool and I'll use usually a five pixel brush, change it to white. And then if you use your right mouse button and you click and drag, then you can create a very easy outline around anything that you wanna emphasize in your thumbnail. Lots of creators use this to emphasize their builds. So once I figured out how to do this, I figured I should share it with you guys. So it's very easy, very fast. Just go through. You can also zoom in really close if you need to. And you can outline your character or I could outline the horse or the barn, which I have done in other videos. So it's a great way to emphasize something on your thumbnail. The last tool that I want to show you today is Mine Emator. Minimator is used for animating Minecraft videos. However, I just use it to take screenshots. I'm using Minimator version 2.0.2. .2. And if we click on this crafting table up here, we can import whatever model we want, which is really fun because you could put your character next to anything. Let's say that I want to get a high quality image of my character waving at the audience to put on a thumbnail. I'll go to character, choose the type, mine is slim. The skin I can download just by putting in my username here, and you can use anybody's username if you wanted to also have your friends in there with you. Click download skin and click done, and then click create. Now you have your skin here, just click to drop her down, and I can then click on the skin, click on a body part, and we can bend the arm, we can raise it up and maybe turn it out to the side like that. So she's kind of waving. Maybe I want a leg to be kind of bent and that leg to be forward a little bit. And maybe we want this arm to be out. And then we can maybe turn the head slightly like that. So she looks really friendly. Now, in order to take a high quality image of this, we're going to zoom in as much as we can. And I'm holding shift 
and then using my right mouse button to kind of look around how I want to look. Now, if we go to Project Properties Environment, we can turn off clouds, we can turn off the ground, and we hit Render, Render Image, click Remove Background, Uncheck Show Watermark, and this will be free. It'll take you to the web page, but you can get that feature for free. And then you'll click Save, and you can choose what folder to save it in. And if we click View down here, we can see this pretty high quality image that will be plenty high enough quality to put on a small thumbnail. Now with this, you can also maybe put a skeleton next to you and all of these mobs are able to move as they can move in Minecraft. And that is how you use Minimator and it's such a great tool. However you position the camera is how your image is going to be rendered in the end. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share it with somebody who you think might like it. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you all next time. Bye.